Okay, so for problem number one, our main goal is to calculate the economic potential for uh, the main reaction, which is given by reaction number one. Before inserting the reaction operation into a flow sheet, you typically have to discuss the feasibility of the economic potential for, th for, for the year, right, that you're going to be building the plan for. So right now, we're going to be setting and using the uh, economic factors or index factors uh, from 2019. This is really important when you design a process from scratch. You may have a couple of alternatives, maybe five, six, seven, the more the merrier. And you need to kind of like narrow down and try to provide constraints, right, to make a good decision. So economic potential can be one of the most important because if the, the reaction is not feasible as it is, assuming 100% conversion, that means that it's going to be really hard after we, you know, bring more reality into it, like uh, inefficiencies in the conversion, inefficiencies in the separations, inefficiencies throughout the process. So in this case, we have uh, information about the 2014 estimates for the chemicals. The only chemical that is not available is by phenyl, but we don't need it because we're going to be only using the main reaction. So when we calculate the economic potential, we need to bring the prices that we get into the same uh, year that we're going to be costing the project for. So in our case, it's 2019. Uh, that's example. As, as time progresses, these values can be changed. Uh, for example, you can get the SEPSI values uh, or the indexes, right, for 2020, 2021, as time progresses. Uh, so uh, it applies to any year that you're considering to be, build a plan for. Typically, the year that is current, like this video is recorded 2020, uh, 21, uh, the values for 2021 will not be completely available all the way until the uh, closure of the year. So there are typically published the year after. So 20, 2019 is, is the, the year that we're going to be focusing on. So we, we do have the SEPSI values and we do have the current pri prices at 20, 2014. So the most important thing that you remember is, right, is that time increases, cost increases, hopefully, right, due to inflation. Uh, there are going to be economical situations globally, right, that may not be like this, but they will be reflected by the trends in the SEPSI values or the uh, cost index. So that inflation is measure, measured by the cost index. Uh, we will explain how these numbers uh, are calculated. Typically, I discuss this in class. But uh, I, I'm going to show you here how to use them. Uh, you can also check any reference on how the SEPC or the cost index factors come. There are multiple uh, cost index factors that you can use. The one that I'm going to use is the chemical plan factors, so it's the SEPC values. So the e equation that relates the the, the current cost the year, for the year that we're going to calculate with the cost of the past and the corresponding indexes is given by that equation, uh, where C corresponds to the cost, I to the uh, value of cost index. Once again, we're going to be using the provided SEPSI values. And one and two represent points in time in which costs require or, or known and index values are known. So for, for us, cost number two will be for uh, year 2019 and cost number one will be the given one in 2014. So you can build a Excel sheet doing these calculations, particularly when you have multiple chemical reactions and you need to compare them. It's just easier to build this in Excel. So basically the equation, right, is given here in the bottom uh, in this uh, table. I'm multiplying the 0.59 cents provided in this statement. This is for uh, hydrogen. I'm using a, a hydrogen as an example. I multiply by the index. Notice that the 2000 19 is in the top and then 2014 is in the bottom and then I, I get a new a new cost right base cost for hydrogen notice cost per unit I'm sorry for hydrogen notice that the value increases with time as expected once again depending on the year that you're comparing you may f find positive or negative but uh, the typical tendency for inflation is to increase the price as time uh, increases so once I know the basic calculation what I can do is code uh, my cells in Excel. So notice for uh, H, uh, hydrogen is 0.63 cents per uh, pound. And then I did the similar calculation here with the original price and the new prices for uh, the rest of the components.
So the economic potential per pound of benzene for the year 2019 can be calculated by just the sales minus the cost of raw materials, uh, not including the cost of utilities and operational cost. So this is a big assumption and, and, and it's one of the uh, skill sets, right, that you need to master when you do economic potential. There, the, uh, people also call it gross profit analysis. So you need to be clear that you're assuming perfect conversion and no problems with utilities, no problem with separations, everything is perfect. So if the, if the, if the chemical reaction that you selected, assuming that everything is perfect, doesn't show that we have more sales, right? More sales than the cost of the raw materials, that means that it's not even worth it to try it out at this point. So it allows you to narrow down alternatives between uh, different uh, potential options, right, for a chemical reaction pathway. So once again, big assumption, only use, uh, like I mentioned before, right, it's not including the utilities or operational costs, but also the big assumption here is that I'm going to use the main reaction and assuming 100% of conversion. That means that the second reaction, the byproduct reaction, it is a deviation from ideality, right? But we're not going to consider that because later you will see that we can we can try to make it happen, right? We can try to uh, improve the process in such a way that even if we have a side reaction, uh, this, the process is still profitable just because of the separations and everything that you do. Uh, also the conditions and all that. So here I created a table on uh, Excel. So I'm gonna just go through Excel so you can see my, uh, my setup for the table. Okay, so once again, we're using the main reaction. We're going to calculate the, the economic potential, uh, not including utilities of cost of op operation. Basically here, what I have are the cost for the different chemicals. I arrange it in such a way that it looks similar to the chemical reaction. And then I have here the prices for 2019. So you may actually want to do uh, 2019. So you're always sure that you're bringing all the prices to the right year. Then you get the molecular weight for all of them. Then what you do is that you calculate the amount, the cost per mole. Uh, here we're in pound moles, we're using field units. Uh, you can do that with kilogram moles. You can also have dollars instead of cents. Here we have cents. So once you convert it to the cents per mole, right, by multiplying the cents uh, per pound, multiply by, divide, uh, multiply by the molecular weight, you get the cents per pound mole for all of the chemicals. So I know that reactants are, uh, I can use the co coefficients of the reactant to be negative, telling right that this is something that we're losing. And when you do that, what you're doing already embedding that this is the sales minus the reactant. So just by using that in there allows you to do that, to already have the right, right sign for the reactants. The same thing for the product. So this is important. Some reactions have, some reactions have that uh, maybe you have a to right for the main product here benzene so if that is the case what you need to do is normalize this so all the calculations that you do are in terms of moles of benzene okay which is the desired product so everything is going to be in terms of the cost per amount of the desired product so if you have something that is not a one mole here for benzene, you need to rearrange, right? Basically, if you have a two, divide everything by two. So the coefficients, you end up having a value when you subtract the sales minus the react, uh, reactant cost, you have a value that is already normalized per cost of desired product. So uh, pay attention to this. This is the most common mistake that students do when they calculate the, the uh, economic potential. So in this case, we have one, we're good to go. What we do is here, I basically multiply the coefficients times the cents per the cost per pound mole. I do the same thing for hydrogen and then I add it up to get this number. I do the same thing here for the react for the products. So I know that uh, basically because I already have a, a negative sign, what I need to do is add these two numbers and that will give me the uh, 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 economic potential in terms of cent a pound mole of benzene. So if you want to keep that tracked, benzene. Okay. And then for here, what you do is that from pound moles of benzene, you convert that back again using the uh, molecular weight now of the uh, benzene. Okay. So the reason why we go back to pounds of benzene instead of pound mole or moles per benzene is because 
that's how you basically cost out, right? The units uh, in terms of that's how you buy it. You don't buy. Uh, you don't buy moles of benzene. That's typically not a unit that you get. You can get pounds of benzene. You can get kilograms of benzene. Maybe it's in the liquid form. You need to do an extra calculation and put it on the, uh, in terms of volume, right? You can use density to, com yeah, density basically for, to convert uh, into volume. So anyway, so in, in general, right, this is what we have. So as you can see, uh, the economic potential of this process is that we have a positive economic potential, which means that this reaction has potential economically. It doesn't mean that this value doesn't mean that we're going to sell the benzene like this. This doesn't, it's not related to anything uh, with the price. However, it's telling you that the reaction does have a positive economic potential. So as it is, right, we are adding value to the reactants. And adding value is that the price of the product, right, the, the, the sales that we can get from the products will be higher than the uh, actual cost of buying the raw materials, right? And now comes the engineering, the chemical engineering idea, right, on, on creating this amazing processes where we make it happen and we can actually increase the economic potential by improving operations and improving separation so we can get a real good profit and then do the economic, the more in-depth economic analysis later in the process. So with this, we conclude problem one.